just wanted to give an off-the-cuff talk on my thoughts on prostitution. Now, I'm aware that Barbarossa is probably in the process of scripting a new video for that, but I'm between long work shifts and I don't really have the time for that. Uh, and I'm also scripting another, in my view, more important video I'm kind of working on long term, so this is going to be off the cuff. But uh, I do have my own two cents to contribute to the topic. <clears throat> now, flat out, overall, I'm, you know, I think it should be completely legalized as well as destigmatized. Uh, I myself, however, have no interest in partaking. Uh, generally speaking, my views on sex, uh, whether it be bought via the conventional prostitution uh, we call relationships or marriage or uh, the sometimes legal, sometimes illegal, for, very formal business transaction of, of money for pussy. My views of sex are akin to my views of shitting and pissing. Uh, I don't spend a great deal of time preoccupied with uh, or being preoccupied with shitting and pissing and it's just something to get out of the way uh, and I don't spend money on shitting and pissing usually so same thing with sex I don't spend money on that either but that's just my view okay that said <clears throat> in the country I live in in Germany I believe in all of the states but certainly in the state I live in prostitution is completely legal and accessible once again, I don't partake of it uh, for a variety of reasons, but primarily for the reason I've, I've given you. It's just, to me, sex is just like shitting and pissing. Uh, not, not really anything to spend money or time on. Uh, but it is completely legal in the state I live in. Uh, and I think there's a lot of undue speculation on with regards to how or how, how prostitution being legalized in the United States as well as destigmatized would affect uh, society. Now, of course, a lot of the discussion on prostitution is centered around the United States because the United States is uh, absurdly puritanical and prudish in a lot of ways. Uh, obsessed, it, it, I mean, the stereotypes are in large measure true, obsessed with violence well, everyone is, but I mean, there's a large portion of violence, but something about uh, prostitution, sex, prudishness, right? However, <clears throat> however, what I've seen living where I live, and in, in having uh, lived in several, or many, um, several countries, uh, in the countries where it's been legal, is that a lot of the speculation about the prostitution being a sort of transformative force that if it were if in fact legalized in the United States and destigmatized as well, uh, that it would somehow change the whole uh, game, as it were, the game, the game of life, the game of biological reproduction, the game of interaction between the sexes. Quite frankly, uh, I see no evidence for that. Here in the state I live in, Prostitution is completely legal. Uh, men go to prostitutes. And there's not a particular stigma attached to it. Not really. Not officially. Not in the sense that there is uh, in the United States. Uh, many of these prostitutes do astoundingly well. Uh, I have some inside sources. Like I said, I don't partake. But I know men who, who do. I know men who have inside information, as it were. And they tell me some of the prostitutes, when they're working the prime of their lives, their peak sexual marketplace value, say, roughly between 18 and, and 25, uh, they're pulling in literally a thousand euros a day. Now, and what happens is they have a strategy. They work um, during the time of their peak uh, SM, uh, SMV, and after their SMV, is no longer just peak or declines, they use the money they've saved, and they save a lot of money for the purpose of investments. A lot of them open up uh, nail studios, uh, that sort of thing, tanning salons. So it's in a way, it kind of it's made a, sort of a sustainable, uh, sustainable long-term business uh, if said prostitute concentrates her time and energy uh, in her and on her job, essentially, uh, during her 
uh, peak uh, SMB years. And there's no real stigma attached to it. I mean, nobody... I mean, nobody, not in the sense in the United States. I mean, people go to prostitutes all the time, or men go to prostitutes all the time, and I mean, nobody thinks twice about it. But in the same, but despite it being completely accessible and legal, although probably not inexpensive in many cases, uh, you don't see men in droves abandoning the, uh, the relationship uh, construct or marriage construct here. Uh, you see them pursuing, as always, the same thing. Uh, and I think a lot of that's uh, related to some of the topics and things I mentioned in my previous video on uh, the desire for unfreedom. But this idea, which I think is uh, undue speculation, or at least speculation that probably wouldn't pan out, that prostitution would just change the landscape in the United States if it were legalized and destigmatized. I don't think so. You know, men have this, you know, the male mother need, the sense of loneliness I talked about in the previous video at length, I talked about that. As well as, you know, the drive to breed. I mean, human beings have that. Uh, and you don't see them giving that up just so they can satisfy their base needs. They do that intermittently sometimes, but this is not a, a constant. I mean, there are, of course, in rare cases, some cases, constant customers, uh, men who return to the same prostitute over and over. It exists, but it doesn't exist very often. So based on my observation, uh, this is you know, me observing subjectively, I don't see any massive change uh, coming to that. There's another aspect to it as well, of course. Uh, that's the aspect of the government. You see, in Holland, it's the government's involved. In Germany, it's trying to get involved. I mean, after all, making all that money, that's all taxable revenue. And the government, of course, wants to get access to uh, its, its people, if you will, its money. I mean, they want to take your money. That's what the government's there to do, to take your money and supposedly to provide services, which it does, but not very well. Um, in some cases, in some cases, it does an okay job, but yeah. You know, imagine, uh, well, a lot of students, young student women do that too. Uh, they'll work, you know, three, four times a week, a couple of hours, you have a couple of thousand already from that as well. But the government wants to tax that, they're not gonna just let that go. And this is now speculation on my part, but I speculate that in the Anglosphere, and I know in Australia, one of the few countries I've actually never been to, but uh, it is, uh, from right here, it's legal there with brothels. But to say in the UK or um, in the United States in particular, where feminism, <coughs> capital F feminism, has its strongest foothold, I don't really see, I mean, I, I see if it were to be legalized and destigmatized in the same sense that it is here. Uh, well, I, the government would almost certainly get involved. I mean, they would want the revenue, just like it wants the revenue here, and it actively takes the revenue in, in um, places like uh, the Netherlands. And as much as feminists protest the idea of prostitution, body uh, using, being women being used you know, for their bodies, and blah blah blah, eventually they would make their peace with that, and they would just try to make it yet another feminist-based, profit-driven uh, venture. Uh, yeah victim culture, this and that. Uh, maybe not victim culture so much as um, just looking for, you know, for an e extra benefits that other people get, don't get for employment if you're a working girl. Uh, special protections uh, that go well beyond what one might expect for uh, someone uh, working in the old, a female working in the oldest profession. So there's just a lot of factors potentially involved in all of this that Quite frankly, I don't see uh, as being able to be overcome. Uh, and you know, it's huge. Prostitution is huge in a place like South Korea, which you know, depending on what chart you look at, uh, is what number eight or twelve or somewhere in between the twelfth largest economy in the world. Just imagine, and this is being conservative, that prostitution accounts for four percent of GDP there, and it, and it's not really legal, but it's sort of legal. And, yeah, a lot of gray stuff. 
but still, uh, men once again are going through the traditional setup. And men, and then there's one other aspect to it as well that men themselves are just not. I mean, I don't know how many men I would you know, have a so-called serious relationship with a woman who's confessed that she worked for five years, you know, five days a week as a prostitute. I mean. In theory, I wouldn't have a problem with that if I were interested in the, the relationship construct to begin with, but you know, most men aren't that way. Uh, they have you know, puritanical ideas about different things. And I don't think women in the United States uh, would allow it to be completely destigmatized. It's just not to their advantage. And it's in large measure destigmatized here. It's just. I don't see a lot of guys uh, taking advantage of it. Um, as opposed to pursuing tr more traditional avenues of uh, relationships and what have you. So, you know, as I said, I don't see a huge uh, transformation occurring due to prostitution uh, being completely legalized in certain Anglo-Saxon countries. Uh, like I said, here in Germany, it's legal. Uh, people just, you know, some men go with them, some men don't. But uh, it's not become sort of some sort of paradigm. It's going to be a specific man who takes advantage of it on a, on a routine basis. Uh, and very few men make it a way of life, or, or a routine that just is ongoing. I don't see that very often. So uh, I'm just a bit skeptical about how much prostitution would just change everything. And of course, you know, male mother need and these things can't be met. I mean, they can't be met in a real, uh, so-called real relationship either. But the illusion, or rather, the del delusion and illusion are there in the case of the real relationship. But you don't see that uh, with regards to the whole prostitution thing. So, and you can't get that. I mean, you could simulate it, you could pretend, just but but the pretending isn't as powerful as the as the pretense, as it were in the real relationship, the so-called real relationship. So, just some thoughts I had on, on prostitution, uh, brief thoughts, long. I just don't see a huge transformation occurring because you know, prostitution is suddenly legalized. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't know, I'm, inter I'm looking forward to Barbara Russell's video, what his thoughts are on this, but uh, um, this is, these are my thoughts. Uh, like I said, I'm working on another topic, uh, fairly unrelated right now, uh, but you know, it's not like prostitution is that inaccessible. And if it were destigmatized, well, yeah, and, and, and a final analogy, uh, analysis, yeah, you'd probably get some more men going for it. But they'd still go for the so-called traditional setup. I mean, that's what men do. Men are, as women are, slaves to their instincts, and part of their instincts uh, encompasses the male mother need, the need for the, sort of the, the comforting mother figure. Uh, as well as regular sex, which they perceive they're not paying for. I mean, obviously they are, but yeah. So anyway, those are my um, brief thoughts on uh, nothing spectacular on prostitution. And uh, who knows when when the next video will appear. Hopefully not uh, in the, not too far off, hopefully. But uh, in the words of Shepard, I should go. In the words of Mr. Bateman, I need to return some videotapes. Take care.